All right. Oh, oh, it's not going. Only here a little bit. dark colors on my dark mat and couldn't see anything but all right well let's go ahead and get started today um, anybody that's joining in on video um, this is our level one two class it'll be 60 minutes um, as always take what you need if you want to kind of step it up a little bit um, by all means and likewise if you need to tone it down and um, take any modifications those are always available too so let's get started tonight on our backs, um, bringing the bottoms of the feet together, allowing the knees to come out wide, and just let the whole length of the spine relax down onto the mat. You can adjust the feet, moving them closer to the body for a deeper stretch or further away from less intense. Take the arms up overhead and allow the hands to find opposite elbows. So in addition to this hip opener and the inner thigh stretch, with the addition of the arms, you can kind of get into the upper back area as well. Again, just slow the breath. Begin to slow the bottom. On each exhale, feel yourself sink a little deeper into the mat. Take three more slow, deep breaths here. After that third breath, stretch the arms up long, extend the toes down to the end of the mat, lengthening the body all the way from the fingertips to the toes. Bring the knees into the chest, hugging the shins tightly. Take a few rocking motions from side to side, massage the lower back. Place the hands behind the knee, and then even just rock forward and backward along the length of the spine until you can make your way all the way up to a seated position. Find your cross-legged seat here or any other comfortable seat. Allow the spine to grow tall as the shoulders move away from the ears. Let's bring the wrists up and start to circle them out a few times, just warming up the joints. And then interlace the fingers together, press the palms away from the ground the spine and tuck the chin. Inhale, draw the arms up overhead, press the heart through. Exhale, release the hands back down. Allow the left fingertips to plant next to the hips and reach up and overhead with the right hand. Keep that right hip planted on the mat and keep the shoulder spiraling open. Inhale the right fingertips down and reach up through the left side. Opening the left ribs. Inhale, bring it back up and keep that left arm extended and then reach across the body, finding that knee and taking your twist, gazing back over the right shoulder. 
As you inhale, feel that spine grow a little taller, and on your exhale, maybe the twist deepens a little more. Exhale, back to center. Inhale, reach those right fingertips up and draw them all the way across the body. Finding your twist towards the left. Taking the gaze all the way over the shoulder. Exhale, bring it back to center. Place the hands out in front and start to walk the palms out, taking a fold over the legs. Deep breaths as you find length in the spine. Walk the hands back in and then switch legs so that the opposite leg comes in front here. It might feel a little weird. Bring the hands out in front once again and take your fold. Allow the head to drop down, allow the neck to relax. Walk the hands back in, and then plant them at the top of the mat, fingertips spread wide, coming into your tabletop position. So knees are stacked over hips, and shoulders are stacked over wrists here. We'll take a few rounds of cat-cow, so inhale, dropping the belly, peeling the heart open as you gaze up. Exhale, round the spine, tuck the chin for cat. Continue with a few more rounds of cat cow, moving with your own breath. And finish your last round. Take one more cat, one more cow. And then return to a neutral spine, flat back. Extend the right leg long on the mat with the toe tucked under. And then with your next inhale, lift the left fingertip. So opposite leg, opposite arm. Start to float the right heel out. So we should be balancing on our right hand, left knee. Reach long through the fingertips and through the heel. Exhale, draw the elbow to the knee. They can touch underneath the body here. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, draw the elbow to the knee, round the spine. Inhale, reach it long. One more time on this side. Exhale, pull it in. Inhale, back to that full extension. Drop the left hand down, and then bring the right foot all the way across the body. Gaze over the left shoulder, back at that foot, creating a C shape with the body here. Inhale, lift the right foot, bring it all the way around so it's coming out to a T at the side here. Hover for a few moments, really working that outer hip. And then drop the foot down. Bring that knife edge, um, shift the weight into that knife edge of the extended leg. And then inhale, come up into your gate pose. So arms are out wide to a T. Bring the right fingertips down and reach up through the left. Exhale, the left fingertips come all the way down. Raise the right hand and maybe raise that right leg, hovering in it. Yes. A few breaths here. Stay open in that heart space. And exhale, bring it back up. Hands plant on the mat and return to the tabletop position. This time we'll send the left foot long. Float the left heel as you reach forward with the right fingertips. So keep that belly pulled in nice and tight towards the spine. Inhale, reach it long, one line of energy, and then exhale, elbow to the knee. 
Inhale, reach. Exhale, pull it in. One more. Move with your breath. Good. Reach it long one more time. Plant the right hand down and allow the left foot to come all the way across the body, gazing back over the right shoulder. Inhale, lift the left heel, bring it all the way around to the side, and we're going to hover here and drop the left foot down. Rise up for your gate pose. So again, the weight is going into that outer edge of the left foot. Bring your left fingertips down as you reach up to the right. Feel an opening in the ribs here. Exhale, the right fingertips all the way down. And maybe you float that left leg. Continuing to work that outer hip. Good. Release. Bring it back up. And find your tabletop. Reach the right fingertips up long, opening to the side. And then on an exhale, come into your thread the needle. So bringing that right arm behind the left, allowing the whole back side of the right arm to come down to the mat. And resting your right cheek or temple here on the mat. You can stay right here if this feels like a good stretch. Or if you'd like to take it a little further, maybe lifting the left fingertips and bringing them to a bind at the low back here. So the back of the left palm meets that right hip. Good. Continue with your breath. Return the left hand down, undoing that bind. You can plant it right next to the cheek and lift up, sweeping the right arm up to the sky once again. Keep that right arm lifted and send the right leg towards the back of the mat, finding your modified side plank. So option to keep that bottom knee down for a modified side plank, or if you'd like to step it up, you can send the left foot back to meet the right and come into a regular side plank. Really press those hips up towards the sky. One more breath. And then bring the right hand down, drop the knees, tabletop. Reach up through the left fingertips. And we'll thread the needle on this side. Bringing the left cheek down. Maybe bringing the back of the right palm to the hip and taking your bind. Pressing that right shoulder back. Release your bind. Plant the right hand on the mat and reach the left fingertips up, sending the left foot back for your modified side plank. Option again to maybe draw the right foot back coming into your regular side plank. Good, staying strong in the core. And drop the left hand down and return to tabletop, good. One breath here, full inhale, full exhale. When you're ready, tuck the toes, send the hips up, coming into your downward facing dog. Bend one knee and then the other. Walking out your dog, maybe shake the head yes, shake the head no. Inhale, lift the heels, bend the knees, and then walk or hop to the top of the mat, coming into a forward fold. From here, keep the right foot planted at the top of the mat, and step back with the left foot all the way to the back of the mat, 
we'll drop that left knee down, coming into a low lunge. So when you have the legs set up, inhale, lift the arms up overhead. Let's bring the elbows out wide into a cactus and then shine the heart up. Take a little back bend here. Inhale back to your low lunge and then we'll drop the arms, bringing them down to the sides. From here, we're gonna do um, a little bit of split preps. So from this low lunge, from this 90 degrees with the front knee, we'll just start to shift the weight back towards that back foot as we straighten the front leg. Maybe folding over the front leg, feeling a stretch all the way along the back side of the leg. Yeah, good. Then inhale back to that low lunge. Really press in here. Feel that stretch along the front of the left hip. Exhale, press it back. Maybe fold over. Good. And then back to that low lunge. Finding that stretch along the front of the left hip. Good, frame the front foot. We'll sweep the front leg back, lifting the back knee, coming into a high plank, high push-up position. Options from here are to drop the knees down and take a knees, chest, chin, or take a chaturanga. We're all gonna sweep up into a cobra or baby cobra, and then meet in a downward facing dog. On your next breath, lift the heels, bend the knees, walk or hop to the top of the mat for your forward fold. This time, let's come into a halfway lift, pressing the palms into the thighs or the shins and squeezing the shoulder blades together. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, root down, rise all the way up, the fingertips meet at the top, and then press the hips forward, find a back bend here. Exhale, back up to the neutral spine, and swan dive down. The left foot stays planted at the top of the mat, step back with your right, coming right into that low lunge. Inhale, reach the arms up next to the ears. And then exhale into that wide cactus arm. Shine heart, look up. Exhale, bring the arms down, fingertips grazing the mat here. And then we'll press back, so straightening that front leg. Sinking the hips down towards the back heel, maybe folding over the front left leg. Inhale, back up to that low lunge, press into it, feel that stretch this time on the front of the right hip. Exhale, extend the front leg. Good, and last time, press it up. And then we'll frame the front foot again, tucking the back toes, lifting that knee, making your way to your high plank or high push-up position. Option to take your knees, chest, chin, or take your chaturanga, take your flow. We'll come into that cobra or baby cobra, and then right into downward facing dog. Full inhale, full exhale. Lift the heels, walk or hop to the top of the mat. This time we'll keep the right foot planted, step the left foot back, but keep that back knee lifted. So we're coming into a high lunge on the right side here. Inhale, sweep the arms up. So make sure we have that 90 degree bend in the front knee. Back leg is straight. Inhale, reach up through the fingertips, lengthen, 
Exhale, open to your warrior two. Back foot at a 90 degree angle. Now that back hip is spiraling open. Flip the front palm, reach forward, and then take your reverse warrior. Yeah. Inhale, back up to warrior two, and then straight into your side angle pose. So you can rest that forearm on the thigh, or maybe reach those right fingertips down to the inside of the right ankle. Good. Inhale, back up to warrior two, and reverse. Inhale, bring it back up, straighten the front leg, shift the hips back as you reach forward, and spiral the upper body down from your triangle pose. So that left shoulder is stacked on top of the right. Good. Soften the front knee. Come back up into your warrior two. And then we'll bring that back foot up a couple of inches. Face it in the same direction as your front foot, setting up for a pyramid pose here. So both feet are facing the same direction. Shorter stance than a normal warrior. And find a nice tall spine here. I like to place my hands on my hips, lengthening through the spine. And when you're ready, you'll start to hinge at the hips. Focus on pulling the right hip back and sending the left hip forward as you draw the nose down towards the knee. This should be a pretty intense stretch along the back of the front leg. So that right leg. You can release the hands from the hips if you'd like to. Bring the fingertips down to the mat for some extra balance. One more breath here. And then just step the back foot up, come into your forward fold. Take a rag doll, allow the hands to find opposite elbows. And take some movement from side to side. Good, release the elbows, plant the left foot at the top of the mat, step back with the right foot, setting up for your high lunge. When you have your foundation set up, reach overhead, sinking the hips down, good. Inhale, reach it up, exhale, open for your warrior two. Keep that back hip spiraling open. Flip the front palm, reach forward to find your reverse warrior. Inhale it back up and straight into your side angle pose. Reaching long through the right fingertips. Maybe bringing the left hand down to the inside of the left foot. Inhale, up to warrior two, and right into that reverse warrior. Keep that 90 degree bend in the front knee. Inhale, back to warrior two, straighten the front knee, reach forward and come into your triangle pose. Right shoulder is stacked on top of left. Reach it back up for your warrior two. And then we'll set up for that pyramid pose. So bring the back foot in a couple of inches. Toes are facing forward. Bring the hands to the hips. Opening up through the heart, lengthening the spine. And then when you're ready, this time pulling that left hip back, right hip forward. Hinge at the hips for your pyramid pose. I need to go turn some kind of air circulation on. So from that pyramid pose, step forward into your forward fold. This time we'll take a gorilla 
So bringing palms underneath the balls of the feet and pulling the upper body down. Good, release the hands. Inhale for a halfway lift, pressing into the thighs or the shins. Exhale, forward fold. Root down through the feet. Inhale, rise up, sweeping the arms up overhead. And on an exhale, we'll bring the hands to heart center. We'll set up for a little bit of balance now. So bring the feet just a few inches apart, coming into your tree, or excuse me, your mountain pose here. Tadasana. Maybe allow the eyes to close for a moment. As you come back to the breath. Allow the eyes to open gently and find a spot somewhere in front of you, an unmoving spot where you can set your gaze or your drishti. So it's important to pick one unmoving spot when you move into these balancing postures. So once you have that, you have your gaze focused, shift your weight over into the left leg. So start to bend at the right knee. You can pick up that right heel. And then on your next breath, inhale, draw the right knee up right on in front of you for your strong pose. Keep the foot active, the foot is flexed. Good. Bring the right hand to the front of that right knee, and then maybe open the hip out to the side. You can stretch the left arm out long to kind of counterbalance that. From here, we'll take that right foot and set it either on the left thigh or the shin, or maybe using it as a little kickstand here with the toes on the mat coming into your tree pose. You can bring the hands to heart center here. You can allow your branches to expand out long. Good. One more breath. And then gently remove that right foot, placing it down next to the left. Good. Roll out that left ankle, that standing leg. And come back into your mountain pose, Tadasana. So you know where we're going on this next side. So when you're ready, planting the right foot down, taking a little bend in the left knee. And then with an inhale, draw that knee up, coming into a 90 degree angle. Bring the left fingertips to the front of the knee as you open that hip out to the side. Gently place the left foot on the thigh, the calf, using it as a kickstand, just anywhere above the kneecap. And allow your tree pose to find any expression with its branches. Bring the arms down and gently place the left foot down next to the right. Good. Inhale, sweep the hands up. And on an exhale, we'll swan dive down to the mat. We'll set up for a pigeon pose next. So step back into your downward facing dog. And then from here, Bring the right foot up towards the hands, laying that right leg across the top of the mat. Staying upright on the hips as best as you can so the hips stay square. When you're ready, kind of checking in with that back leg, making sure it's parallel with the mat. Maybe folding over that front knee, coming onto the forearms.
deep breaths here. Stay here with me for just a few more moments. And then when you're ready, walk the hands back in, coming back upright. We'll plant the hands at the top of the mat as you lift that back knee, making your way into a downward facing dog. Take that right leg high for a three-legged dog. And then bend the knee and open up that right hip, allow the heel to move towards the glutes. Exhale, place the right leg back down and lift the left foot, finding your pigeon pose on the left. So allowing the hips to settle in. Checking in with that back leg. And then when you're ready, folding over that front shin. Begin to lift the heart, walk the hands in, press your way back up, coming into that three-legged dog, bend the knee, open up the left hip. Exhale back down for your downward facing dog. Drop the knees, come into your tabletop position, and then swing the feet around to one side, coming into an easy seated position. We'll keep the feet out in front as we set up for our boat pose next. So um, feet are out in front about a foot or so. You can start by placing the hands on the backs of the thighs and then tilt the upper body back so it's at about a 45 degree angle. From here, begin to float the heels up so that they're parallel with the ground and with the mat. You can stay right here if this feels like a good amount of challenge for you. Or maybe you'd like to bring the hands out to the sides for even more of a challenge. If you'd like even more, maybe you straighten the legs. Good, let's stay here for another five, four, three, two, slowly start to lower all the way down to the mat. Take your time getting there. And when you finally do reach the arms up and long overhead, full body stretch from fingertips to toes. Bend the knees, bring the backs of the feet, the heels, as close as they can get to the glutes. We're going into a few rounds of the bridge home next. So they bring the arms out long so the fingertips can almost touch the heels. And then on your next inhale, start to press into the arms, into the heels as you press the hips up. Behind the back. 
Exhale, lower back down. For this last round, you have the option to take another bridge or if you have wheel in practice, you are welcome to take a wheel pose as well. So inhale to prepare. And then press up into your last round of bridge or wheel. Good. Exhale, lower back down. Draw the knees into the chest. And make some big circles here with the knees. Switch directions in your circles. And then we'll bring the knees to about a 90 degree angle. Bring the arms out into a T on either side of the body. And then drop the knees over to one side for your spinal twist. Inhale, bring it back to center. Hug the right knee in towards the chest and extend the left leg along on the mat. So as you're hugging that knee in, you should be feeling something in the front of the right hip here. Extend that leg long up towards the sky. And allow the fingertips to interlace behind the right side here, pulling it back towards the upper body. If you're able to reach the foot, you can also um, allow the fingertips to wrap around the toes or the ball of the right foot. Release the hands and then we'll slowly lower that right foot down to meet the left leg. Move really slowly here, engaging the abs. And then once that right foot makes it all the way to the ground, you can pull the left knee in. Feeling that stretch along the front hip. Stretch the left foot long up towards the sky and either interlacing fingertips behind that left thigh and maybe reaching up for the toes. Release the hands and slowly lower that left foot down to the left. Once it gets there, it's time to hug both knees into the chest. Extend the feet up long. And then lower both feet down to the mat. 
So really press the lower back into the mat here as you start to move those heels towards the ground. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Release. Find that release on the mat. We'll bring the bottoms of the feet together again, sending the knees out wide. So just like we started class this evening, option to bring the arms up overhead to take that upper back stretch with it, or maybe this time placing one hand over the heart and one hand over the belly. If you set an intention and at the beginning of your practice, maybe you take a moment to reflect on that. See if there's any room to release tension from the forehead or the jaw or the shoulders. You let yourself melt into that. If you have the arms up overhead, you can begin to bring them down by the sides, guiding the legs together. And for our last piece of four shavasana, we'll send the legs up long towards the sky, coming into your legs up the wall. Maybe using your hands as a support underneath the safe from here. Have a shoulder stand in your practice, and if you'd like to move there, you're more than welcome to. If you have any final postures and movements that you'd like to take before finishing our practice tonight, take a moment or two here to explore that. Listening to and honoring whatever it is that your body may be in need of. When you're ready for your final resting pose, extend the heels out long, find the corners of the mat, reaching the arms out to the sides, and settling into your shavasana.
Keep the eyes closed or keep a nice soft gaze. We'll bring the hands to meet at heart center. Thank you so much for coming tonight and sharing your practice with me, sharing your energy with me. To close out our practice, we'll draw the thumb knuckle up to the third eye. We'll do that all day, most day. Mm -hmm. 